I'm aiming to get from the navigable source of the River Wye all the way to the mouth of the river, which is roughly 100 miles, and then make it 50 miles by road back to my car at the start. I need a bike for this project, so I put a message out on the local Facebook group. I'm off to collect one now. Pretty good, nice dimensions, normal size. Oh, it's, it's having a little, having a little wee. Ooh. Looks pretty ropey. The tires are old and questionable. The first stage will be to get a load of WD-40 in there. Rather amazingly, the free bike is working really well. After a dose of WD-40, it's just got some squeaky brakes and dodgy gears and a very good bell. So back to the drawing board and we'll see how we can turn this into a magic paddling machine. For the pedal paddle frame, I've decided to use off the shelf material. It's nice and square, easy to use and reliable and should be available to pretty much everyone everywhere. Progress so far. Everything's pretty much in the right place. This is it working as it should. So you've got a nice stroke there. The, the tip turns the corner there and become, come, starts going backwards just as the tip would enter the water. So there roughly, assuming the water somewhere down here, um, it will be definitely on its backwards trajectory and then it'll go down. Probably we'll have about that much penetration to the water, which isn't much of the paddle, but it's definitely enough. Um, it's limited by the length of the crank arm. If it were longer, then we'd get better penetration into the water. Uh, then all of these joints are experimental. They're there for adjustability, so that can detach and move up and down, that can detach and move along, so that we can adjust the blade tip geometry. This is the solution I've come up with for the chain tensioner. Just rotates back like that, sits down onto the chain and increase the tension like that. They're <laughs> very top heavy. <laughs> this thing is just gonna topple over, isn't it? Oh dear. The challenge is I've got a really, really, really small car, so I can't take that trailer. Therefore, I've got to try and make a trailer out of this frame here. So it survived up a steep hill with me pulling hard. I have noticed that the wheels are really wibbly wobbly, so I do, well, when I use this, I'll have to be going really slow, otherwise I think it'll just gyrate out of control. Right, I've got to try and fit all of that into that little car. It can barely fit two people in. I don't know how it's going to fit that lot in, but we're going to have to deconstruct, squeeze it in somehow. Absolutely rammed. The passenger seat. That's rammed. Just got to try and fit all my electronics in, all food, all clothes and all camping gear. And there just simply isn't any more space. Off we go. Time to hit the road. Everything's packed in. Not an inch of space left. And bearing in mind I've got to cycle with 99% of this lot. On the trailer. Wow. No idea how I'm going to do it. It's incredibly heavy and incredibly big. Off we go.
Just left the start of the River Wye, the navigable source roughly at Glasbury in Wales. Pedal Paddle Mark II needs some refining, but it seems to work quite well. And now heading down a very, very shallow river indeed. So that's the bottom <laughs> right there. And this is the first of a sort of mini rapids. Cruising, little bump there. Oh, crunch. Oh dear. Oh no. Oh. That was a quick mechanical failure. It's catching just on <laughs> the, um, the brake lever there. Strangely, something's moving back there and I don't know what it is. This which has slipped. That one hasn't slipped. At least I don't think it has. I will make sure they're done up. Oh, that, yeah, that's too loose, isn't it? Ready to go. You can definitely go through shallow water which is good, as long as you sort of keep the paddles in neutral like this. What a beautiful day. Oh, it's not liking that at all. It needs mass. This thing certainly can't be carried. There she goes. They clean up, you know, bits off the bottom hunt around and oh, it's beautiful so that's it so Sun setting on the first day on the River Wye with Pedal Paddle Mark II. It's doing really, really well. And I think on reflection, I mean, it's just such a nice feeling to be able to think of something, make it, and then go exploring with it. It's like genuine satisfaction, proper satisfaction. So yeah, one happy bunny. <laughs> just come across a pair of sunglasses. I came away without my glasses and it's as if they were left there by divine providence. River Island, banging specs. But my shopping choice wasn't all that <laughs> well considered. Normally, cheese survives just fine for a couple of days. This has just melted and the oil's come out of it. It's, yeah, unfortunate. The Mars bars, i.e. emergency snacks, they are proper soggy too. Oh well. I'm on sardines and nuts by the looks of things. Maybe an apple or two. This is the setup for the night, and I've got company. There are a group of snacking swans just chilling out over here. Having a good old snaffle on the bottom there. It must be yummy. Oh, tasty. Sort of reminds me of late night revelers stopping off for a quick kebab before going to bed. Yeah, swan snacks.
After a long day on the water yesterday, well, a long afternoon on the water, um, there are some tweaks I want to make. And the main one is making these paddles stick into the water more. Um, so I'm gonna release these and push them down and then adjust these. Not good. That's a leak around the valve. Maybe the valve isn't tight enough. Let's investigate. This comes in one of the in the repair kit for the stand-up paddleboard, and it looks like it's a valve tool. So I'm going to have a go at tightening a valve in place, so that should fix it. Pedal's fallen off. Without a pedal, I can't paddle. Look, literally just fell off. Oh dear. I'm stood in the middle of the stream. Hopefully, the, thankfully, the current's not too strong. I'm going to see if I can find the pedal. It's got metal in it and plastic. Plastic will float, metal will sink. Who will win? Oh dear. No sign of this pedal. <laughs> literally. <laughs> Up the river without a pedal. This is not good. Oh God. I have to start thinking of other solutions. I'll give it a little bit longer, a little bit longer. Yes! Oh my God! Look at that! Oh! Thank God. That was gonna be... <laughs> yes! The metal and plastic was heavy enough that it didn't just go downstream with the flow. Look, it's, it's ripped some of the aluminium crank out. Let's see if it will go back in. This is very promising. Yes, okay, fantastic. Right. I'm going to get the toolbox out and really tighten it up good and proper and check the other one. Well, capsized for the first time and the culprit was the crossing of those two streams over there where the sort of side current just took me and took the edge under and just tipped me right over very quickly. But yeah, susceptible to capsizing in strong currents. So I'm drenched and everything got a drenching, but most things are waterproof, except for my waterproof valuables bag. <laughs> the little, little red thing back there. Turns out not so waterproof, even though it's like quadruple rolled and buckled tightly. Because I've been going so through so many rapids, it's pretty useful to have an, uh, the the oil free rather than fix as a tiller. All that's required just to keep it on track is just to drop it in the water like that. And it's a good compromise between um, steering and then control when going through rapids. It's the alarm clock back there. Oh, so achy. That seat, oh, lower back is just, mm. well, it's a beautiful, beautiful morning. Quick video of the boat at the beginning of day three. It's unlikely to change from here on in, I think, unless they're just very minor tweaks. So. The way it works, you've got 
power into the pedals there, down to the rear sprocket or the rear sprocket of that frame there, and then into the chain which runs under the seat through a chain guidance device, through the chain tensioner, which actually is highly effective. It's big, heavy, ugly, and clunky, but it really, really works. I haven't skipped a beat so far. And then into the drive mechanism here, which are these two paddles. And then the paddles allow to rotate with the pedals up to this linkage and to there, both of which are um, fully adjustable. The tires are for the bike and trailer respectively. The stand-up paddleboard itself is by a company called Two Bare Feet. It's their largest mid-range touring sub. They do a pro version, but for the purposes of this, it's absolutely perfect. It's got two permanent baby fins at the back, which are great for protecting the board. And there is the option of putting a much larger fin in, um, in the middle, but I chose not to, so it can go through shallower water. And so far it's been brilliant. paddling along and spotted this chap, or chapess, just floating away in the water with its head right underneath the water and somehow still surviving. I have no idea how. Incredible creature. I think it's a dung beetle. Yeah, so to land and hopefully to safety. Oh, that's much better. I've got the strata sun cream off and ready for a really good night's sleep got a load more food in so have some dinner before bed and then off to sleep Yesterday I spotted that this chain is getting quite loose, this front drive chain, to the point where it actually managed to change gear um, and bump up to that one. I'm going to take it as an opportunity to, one, change the chain, and two, change the gearing ratio. So I'm going to drop it down onto this ring and match it up to probably that ring um, there. And I think that will probably, it'll make it maybe less fast, but I think it could make it easier on the knees. Just as an experiment, we'll see what happens. We've got brand new, well, brand new used chain on there, and it's tight now, very tight. It'll loosen up very quickly though. Ah, oh, we have a broken chain that was as a result of using this crappy bent and too well partially toothless sprocket set. It could also be my fault. I've um, there's quite a lot of crossover of that chain. All set. That's pretty dead straight there. Still a little bend in it, but much much less severe than it was before. I'm hoping that will do the trick. I think these are the worst rapids on the River Y, and people come and train here. I think probably when it's a bit more full. But I really hope she can make it down here. That is, that's going to be really sketchy, properly sketchy. I'm going to tie everything down. I'm definitely not going to film, but just in case I lose a camera. Okay. I made it down. <laughs> there was a massive rock I got hooked up on. Uh, and I hopefully the bottom of this board's okay, but I made it down just, God, it was hairy and it was rough. So yeah, all in one piece and everything was tied down, flip flops, sunglasses, water bottles, everything. So yeah, made it. Oh. That's, the, I think, the roughest part of the river where I sorted.
So I was trundling along nicely and then came to a very swift stop <laughs> as I mounted this rather large boulder bang in the middle of the river. I'm dead impressed with this board. I mean, it's been treated very poorly by me and it hasn't given up yet. And this is just one of many hard scrapes it's had. Very impressed. Off we go. Ah, so stopped off for uh, a top up of water. Been planning for like six litres a day and got me a pint at the same time. Result, so river wire and a pint. Superb. A highly technical stability test. The beer survived three sets of rapids with ease. No spilling, no splash in, no splash out. Uh, very stable indeed. Pleased with that. It's time to do a demo in weeds. So this is a thick clump of weeds. Hopefully there isn't a boulder in it, but there's a thick clump of weeds coming right up. And over we go. So initially this seems and just treadles it down nicely. So we've hit the tidal wire at last. You can see the tide line on the bushes and trees there. Um, the water is very different and it smells very different. Very much a sort of salty sea dog on the nose. Since joining the tidal section of the Y, must be about an hour ago, I think I've only seen one way out. Otherwise it's just steep muddy bank like that. And that way out was private fisheries steps. I'm really hoping that there's going to be a way to get out of the river because I'm going to have to take everything up into a field or onto a landing somehow because by the looks of things, tides are extremely high at the moment and I had a warning up on one of my weather apps saying that there's a uh, flood tide which could be interesting. Hopefully don't wake up in a wet muddy puddle. Ramping up the pace, uh, still no sign of any way out of the river. So I figured the more ground I can cover, the higher the likelihood of me finding a spot to get out at before it gets dark and before the water starts coming in. The tide is turned. It's coming in fast. So I'm gonna have to get out at whatever, whatever, however I can. I think I've spotted a bit of shingle over there. Let's go. Oh my God, that happened fast. So one second I was over there looking up river and it was flowing in one direction. And then all of a sudden it just switched and it is thoroughly flowing in this direction. Um, and has come up probably about a meter in the last five, 10 minutes. Uh, just phenomenal flow rate. And now it's just a complete flood. Um, I've got my valuables up onto the bank there and essential, so I'll be fine. Um, the boat on the other hand, um, at the very, very least, what I can do is tie a long string to it and just anchor it up on the bank. Um, but I'm literally up to my knees in river mud and it's nasty. Anyway, I should keep moving just to make sure I don't get stuck. Duckleberry fin is very nearly out. Uh, I've just got it strapped to my waist and pulling on a few bands as well. And nearly there. Had dinner. Time for a jolly good snooze and an early wake to try and catch the tide. So it's about four in the morning and I've just been down to the river to check what it looks like. And there is literally no way I can get back in um, until it's high tide again. I came to check out the river. It already dropped like by a metre in like half an hour. So I'm going to get going very quickly, very muddy, very sticky. And I think the mechanism at the back is a little broken, but um, hopefully it'll get us there fast enough. I'm well underway. It's now raining and that pedal paddle is pulling. I mean, one of the paddles is in the wrong position. The things holding it on are a little bit loose and it's been just totally beaten about and there's a load of flex in it where, where a screw needs tightening but it's just still going and I'm giving it pretty much all I've got to try and get to Chepso in time because I believe if I leave it too long then there is a chance I won't be able to get out of the water again. I think the jetty there stops at a certain point and today is a very very low tide along with a very high tide and you can see how quickly it's going down this is what half 
20 minutes, half an hour, and it's nearly halfway down, just phenomenal. Just coming around the final corner, into the, well, into the final straight, chapter. It's majestic, it's like something out of Lord of the Rings. Look at it, it's massive. Hopefully I get there in time. If you've enjoyed this journey so far, please consider liking and subscribing. It means a lot to me and it will enable me to produce more content over the coming months and years. So all of your support will be hugely appreciated. And any comments, stick them in the comments below. Right, final stretch to Chepstow, let's go. Chepstow. Well, that's a welcome sight. Nearly there. Found it. That's my spot. Hopefully I can get out there. Just come ashore and Simon and Desi here have helped me unload that lot from the pontoon down there, which is slowly listing over to one side. Not much longer and probably wouldn't have been able to get up. How much longer do you think we've got before that's gone? Well, you can see on the back there, she's already drying out, see the waterline? Oh, yeah, yeah. And that'll go off very steep within 15 minutes. Oh, wow, okay. Oh, well, got finished with 15 minutes to spare. <laughs> You've done well. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much, and thank you, both of you. No problem. It's not good enough, it's got way too much flex. That's the forward flex motion, and that's the side to side. You can't really climb hill effectively. A gentleman named Don, who lives in Chepstow, has kindly donated some wood. So I've managed to solve the forwards and backwards shimmy. That's with this piece of wood, if it were fixed in, that solves that. A sideways shimmy, I think, could be solved with string from there, down to there, string from there, down to there. Well, the modified version seems to be holding it together. I've done two miles of the, what was 51. Um, it seems to be holding together. The rear wheels are looking characterful as before. This one especially has got quite a wobble to it. But generally, if I just stay in the easiest possible gear, I think I'll eventually be able to make it. It's held together for the first 10 miles. It's getting dark and I don't have proper lights, so I've only got a head torch, so I am going to call it a day. And a gentleman is very kind to lend me his bit of grass. And I'm going to bed down here for the night. Inside my humble abode for this evening, um, I've put a tarpaulin up uh, between a fence and a gate. And I should do this nicely, assuming that the rain isn't too heavy. This is the most obscene climb. It's the first time I've got on walks. I was trying to make it all the way without getting off and walking, but this is just too steep. I can barely push it up on foot. Um, good news though, that bell is still working. I'm about 15 miles into the 40 miles for today. It should get me back to the car. And Google's done, done a wonderful job and taken me by some incredible routes. Look at this. It's beautiful. And only a very, very few cars. I'm happy with the trailer, although it's got quite the wobble on it. Um, just keeping it nice and slow. Look at that. More beautiful views. Yeah. 
I've made it back to the point where I first put this thing together before heading down the Y. That thing is incredibly heavy. If it weren't for this godsend of a gear, this big one, which allowed me to just spin up the hills, I would have been pushing all the way. I pushed for one horrific hill, otherwise I rode all the way. I'm done. Oh my God. Well, if you've enjoyed this episode, please consider liking and subscribing for uh, more adventures like this. And um, the more of you who support with subscriptions and also notifications, etc., the more likely I will be able to, to uh, continue creating more content um, through the next year and beyond. So all your support is hugely appreciated. And to the next adventure. Let's go.